In this video I wanted to demonstrate the use of the retainer box in the widget system which means that you can then start adding some sort of post-process effects through an effects material. Um, it still works as a widget, um, not when you kind of shred the numbers too much because it relies on the location of the buttons to register but if you use it as a subtle effect that kind of honors those locations then it, it does work um, you can then of course bring your widget into 3d space and in this example i'm getting the distance between my player and the widget and affecting the material parameter collections once i cross the threshold the perceived animation which is just code settles to a screen which i can then interact with so you know part of your narrative might be where you walk into a room and all these crt screens holding information but only when you come up to them do you a get any of the information or be in a position to interact with them so i thought that was quite fun it was just a bit of an experiment um, to see if i could get it to work but let me jump into the blueprints and i'll show you what is happening so looking at my basic widget, nothing exceptional here, apart from the fact that we are using a retainer box as the main container. Now a retainer box is a kind of special widget component, which you've got a little bit of control over, um, as well as it being possible to add effects materials, which we're doing here under the texture parameter texture, it also gives you the ability to optimize your widgets where you can determine how often this widget is drawn to screen. So I'm just leaving it on the default, which is on tick effectively. Or if you wanted it to be every half a second, then you could, I think, if you increase phase count to 30 and it's a 60 frames per second game, then it will render every half a second. So it's a way of optimizing not the bit that it, we're looking at today we're looking at this slot the effects material and the effects parameter so i've got my material connected up so it is a special material for the user interface so under material domain make sure you've got user interface now this is where that parameter is linked through so texture if you recall is the name of the parameter that we're affecting so this widget gets drawn as a texture and then anything that happens in this material and is output to the final color will affect the texture of the widget that's been rendered i think that's how it works because we now have a texture that we can manipulate um, and or a special kind of render target a few things just specific to my example particularly the crt example uh, in the world i have got um, a color parameter again material parameter collection where i'm just affecting the color when i'm getting closer in proximity i'm swapping that out and then when i'm clicking i'm also randomizing that material parameter collection um, i've just got a generate offset bands which just gives me the crt effect which i'm blending over the manipulation that's happening here with the texture now this is kind of standard panner stuff again i've just hooked it up to material parameter collections so i've got my tile code here i've then got my Panner code here. So Panner X, Panner Y, Tile X, Tile Y, all material parameter collection variables. And then I've just got some other examples which we'll look at in a bit, just to sort of see what the other effects are. Let me unplug that for the moment. So obviously depending on the textures that you have plugged in you get different effects so that's quite fun to play around with and see see the visual effect of that now i'm using a material and taking the rg channels and pulling that through 
into a panner so that that movement is then pulled into the texture UV to distort that texture. And because I've got a distort multiplier here, basically when that is at one, everything is applied. And if I just affect that one material parameter collection back to zero, it negates and turns off all of that code. So I'm just kind of using a single value to control everything that's happened before the texture, which controls the distortion. Um, I've just got my textual coordinates here set to one and one, and it's these material parameter collections that do the scaling, and here do the animation on the X and Y axes across um, the panel. So that then comes back into the overlay and becomes my final color. So that's the material, but then what I have got in my setup actor, my proximity actor, um, which is just a setup actor. There's no, there's nothing in here. I'm not actually using this now. I'm using it as a setup actor. A couple of things that I need to store initially is that on begin play, I'm getting my art with character. I'm just saving that locally into this blueprint. And I'm getting my scalar parameter value for the distor distortion multiplier. And I'm just saving that locally. So I've got that there. Then a few things are happening on event tick. So first things first, I am calculating the distance between my widget actor in the world. So I've just got an instance editable variable of the 3D widget, which I've pipetted in the world. I'm getting the location of that and the location of my art Liz character and calculating the distance. Now, and that then dampening things down a bit because these values have a big impact on the effects of changing the material parameter values that in turn drive the visual effect of the distortion on the widget. So this is through a bit of trial and error, just dampening things down. Um, I do have a Boolean here, which basically just gives me the condition of whether or not these values should update on tick. Um, basically, when I get within range, um, I turn that to false so that that isn't recalculated. So you'll have noted that when I'm at a distance from the screen, it's obviously scrambling. Again, my movement is affecting the values of that. But when I cross a threshold, I'm triggering that there's an animation just using an F interp to bring down that distortion multiplier to zero. Then I can interact with it. But now when I walk away, the interference doesn't kick in anymore because that's what I wanted. I only wanted it to happen once. And then on my event tick, I've got another section here, which is in trip range. So basically when I am within range, when this value is within and under 0 0.0012, ignore that, I'm not using that now. Um, I'm basically saying should tween interference, which was the Boolean above, I'm setting that to false. I'm changing the vector parameter value in that material parameter collection, which in effect changes the color here. Um, and obviously when I move out of range, I'm swapping it back. So that, that's what's going on there. But here, this is where I'm just using an F inter to take the current distortion multiplier value when I am within range. And then I am using an F inter to go from my current multiplier value down to zero, in effect, turning off the distortion over time and my interp speed is one so that's why it doesn't happen immediately the f interp tweens across to between those two values and therefore it looks like it animates from being distorted to in tune and then i'm just resetting some of the values so my tile values are one-to-one -one so that it is 
as I want it to appear on the 3D widget in the world. Um, a couple of things just to note, if you, if you look at the 3D widget, I've actually got three of them here and two above are just slightly translucent and the way that I did that was if you look at the 3D widget, if we look at the widget here and I have set this firstly to transparent in the blend mode, but I clicked through onto the parent and then onto its parent and I've just added this here which is an opacity multiplier parameter which on the master I've just left one but here I set to 0.9 so it's not fully opaque and then I do have uh, so the 0.9 is the back image the back widget and then the two sitting above that I've set to 0.3, so it's 30%. Um, so just when I'm a bit closer, so it's just giving it a bit of an effect. I could actually um, keep the CRT animating in theory if I put a separate panner here on the Y, if I just put 0.1. And in theory, that should then still animate even when it's the line should still go up, yeah, which they are. So I quite liked it because of the moire effect that you're getting. Um, it kind of draws your attention to it. So lots to explore um, in terms of how that texture can be affected but this was just an initial test. So I hope that video is of use. If so, please do like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive any updates. And thank you for your support.